They say that prepping for a colonoscopy is the worst part of the test. So in this video, I want you guys to follow along as my husband Joe preps for his upcoming colonoscopy. Welcome to Bear Pantry Talk. This is the sister channel to the Bear Pantry Show. This is where you're going to find honest reviews, exciting unboxings, do-it-yourself projects, and engaging commentary. Hey guys, Barbara here. So Joe is outside changing the brakes on Jada's car right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start this stuff for him, okay? So this came from the pharmacy, this big jug. And let me tell you, the instructions could not have been more confusing in this process because this jug says one thing, and then we got PDF, you know, PDF files from Kaiser because we're Kaiser members, and they're saying other things. So they're saying you can put Sprite in here if you want to to help you. No, this thing says do not take undissolved, right? Do not eat solid foods at least two hours before you start drinking it. He has to start drinking it today at six o'clock. And um, it says don't consume, for best results, do not consume solid food three to four hours before drinking. So what's the time right now? It's 11 o'clock in the morning. He has to start at six. So he better hurry up and come in here and get some food in his system. He's just going to do clear broth. I'm going to make some chicken soup. But he's not going to be eating the chicken, okay, just the broth. He hasn't had anything to eat yet today. I wanted him to have some protein, you know, either by this muscle milk or this plant. Oh, it's open. This plant-based one that's vanilla flavored or chocolate flavored. I don't think I want him to do the chocolate flavor. He's not supposed to have anything that has red, blue, or purple dye because that will show up as blood during the test. I don't think the chocolate flavored stuff has any of those colors, but just to play it safe, they say if you can't see through it, don't drink it, right? So I wanted him to just have like the vanilla one or the um, non-flavored one right here. But I don't know if he'll drink that when he comes in. He might just do the soup, okay? So the test is tomorrow, Monday the 20th at 1 o'clock. And so let me go back a little bit while I'm filling this stuff with water. It's supposed to be 4 liters. A liter is like the bottle of a soda. So like 33 and a third, right, for a liter? So like these two cups should be there about... But we don't have to worry because there's a fill line right here. A big thing here says fill line. Let me show you guys. See? Fill line. Okay? All right. So we're just going to fill this up. They say use lukewarm water. We don't have any lukewarm water from our water dispenser. So I did some cold and some hot to make it lukewarm. And they say if you chill this on the fridge... It'll be better for you to drink because I imagine it's pretty gross to taste, but I'm going to taste it. I'm going to just take a little teaspoonful and taste it for you guys. So the reason that Joe is doing a colonoscopy is because um, his most recent uh, stool test came back positive. So Joe is going to be 64 in October. I'm doing this on September 19th. And he's never had a colonoscopy, so a lot of people have asked us why. I think it's just the policy of Kaiser. They try to do things that are less invasive, and if the stool test comes back negative, you're good. If you're not having any symptoms, you're supposedly good, right? So uh, he, this is his seventh test. He started to take it in 2014 when we got our insurance back, and all of them have always been negative. So I need more water. Okay, I'm going to go get more water. But this one came back positive. They said they saw a small amount of blood in the stool that's not visible to the naked eye. And that could be something as simple as a bleeding hemorrhoid because I know this is going to be gross, guys. I hope you, you guys are not eating. So normally when we have taken, because I've been taking the test since I turned 50. So I've, I'm 55, so I've taken it five times. Mine was negative, thank God, because I don't want to go through this procedure in the middle of a pandemic, okay? I need for my family to be there with me if I have to go on the general anesthesia. So anyways... Um, uh, they normally let you go on a piece of tissue that you put underneath the toilet seat, right? So you lift up the toilet seat, place this tissue, go, take the little sample, put it in the thing, mm, it's done. Now this time it's the first time they sent a test where they say wipe, take the stuff off the wipe, and then, and I knew that was going to be a problem. Let me go fill some more of these cups, all right? I'll be back. give this bottle a shaky shaky before I add the rest in just to dissolve this thing so you know a lot of men don't like to go through testing like this and for this reason black men especially come down with really really horrible stage four the big C you know what I mean I gotta watch what I say here at YouTube because they like to demonetize my videos 
that have anything to do with health. You know what I mean? I hate that because I'm not dispensing any medical advice. You speak to your doctor about any of this stuff first, of course. That's my disclaimer. But this is what my husband's going through. And I want to show you guys how easy or how horrible the, the process is just depending. Because this will make you go, ooh, it doesn't smell good. It smells medicine. Remember, we have to get to that line, okay? So while I'm getting to that line, I'm just going to get more water as I need. But while I'm getting to that line, um, I want to go ahead and play one of my commercials about my cookbooks. Here we go. Belizean black fruit cake, stewed ox tails, warm Creole bread. Simply the best Belizean dishes you can make at home. Watch. Just add flour, baking powder, and milk in a small bowl. Mix, roll flat, then deep fry for a fry jack that is so versatile that it goes perfect with everything. Start the day off right with my simple Belizean Johnny cakes that can be made in the oven or air fryer. All these recipes can be found in my Belizean cookbook, Beans and Rice, Volume 2. Get a copy today only at www.bearpantryshow.com shop safely and securely at www.bearpantryshow.com and we're back so I got another cup we're almost at the fill line this cup might do it so how many do we do seven of these measure cups and he has to um, set aside one liter of this to drink tomorrow morning okay so I think we're right at that fill line guys yeah so let's go ahead and give this another shaky shaky I think when the pandemic is over I'm gonna have them order one for me with all this um, stomach upset and stuff that I suffer from I think I should have one they say you can order one at any time if you're having any type of symptoms my problem is I can't process a lot of things, you know, beans, anything on that FOD map list. Give me some trouble. So let's go ahead and taste this. I'm going to get a little shot glass, but we're not by any means going to drink no damn shot. I'm just going to. That's too much already. I just want to taste. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought it was gonna taste citrusy it's just salty it tastes salty uh, yeah you're gonna have to chill this and drink this from a cup with a straw put the straw back of your throat so it doesn't touch your taste buds on your tongue child let me find a spot in the fridge to put this Jesus he has to drink oh, oh we gotta put a liter aside thanks for reminding me people because he's just gonna eyeball it I don't need no eyeballing so I'm gonna put like two of these cups aside You know, this is to make sure that you don't have any cancer inside your body because colon cancer doesn't come with any pain according to the video that they had us watch. It doesn't come with any pain at the start of it. But if they catch it early enough, it, it's totally curable, like 90 or 95% curable. So why wouldn't you want to catch something early if something's growing there, right? So he's going to have to drink this tomorrow morning at 9, four hours before the procedure. I guess different doctors do it differently where they put you like in a twilight, but for him, they say they're going to give him anesthesia and we can't go with him. You know, we're going to take him over there. I'm going to see if they'll let me in, but um, pretty much they're saying because of COVID rules that you got to drop him off and go wait in the parking lot, which is what we're going to do. So he had to get a COVID test. This is only the second time he's been COVID tested and he was negative. So I can show you those results right here. Oh my God, how do you close this thing? Man, these complicated bottles that these kids bring here. So this has to go here. So let's clean up. And then I'm gonna show you how I make this bland soup, all right? So if he can't have anything with milk, so if he's gonna do this protein, oh, I might not be able, oh, this, he can't do this muscle milk. I just realized that. He's five days ago, he should have stopped eating everything with nuts and seeds. And you'd be so shocked at how many things has seeds. I have trouble with seeds and everything has seeds. The cucumber, the tomatoes, the uh, strawberry, um, watermelon, because even if it's seedless, they have those little white seeds that you don't notice, right? Uh, what else? The stuff on top of the burger um, bun. 
So tomorrow when he starts drinking the other one at nine, because what he's supposed to do with the big jug, he's going to start at six and every 15 minutes, he's going to drink eight ounces of that, of that stuff right there until it's done. So every 15 minutes, every 15, eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces. And then he's done and then he just starts going to the bathroom. So you might as well, might as well just camp out already, clean the bathroom completely. And it's like, that's your bathroom. We're not going to touch that tonight, right? So I don't know if he's going to get any sleep. I'll tell you guys in the morning. So then tomorrow morning when he starts drinking the, the stuff that I set aside, he's supposed, he's supposed to do the same thing again. Start at 9 and then every 15 minutes drink 8 ounces. At the start, he's going to eat two of these simethicone tablets. And then at the end, you know, when he's done drinking it, he'll eat two more. And then after that, you know, it's a matter of going over there to the place. Now, this is also Simithicone, gas X and stuff like that. It'll say that on the box, Simithicone. But they don't want him to do this one because they want him to do prescription strength. Okay, so set that aside. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to grab a bowl here. So no dairy, no heavy foods, one day before the thing. It's 1 o'clock tomorrow that he has to go. So he's going to eat this soup though because it's 11, 11 now. So I'm going to take like maybe one leg because that's the the part that gives you a lot of moisture right I'll put a wing for me because I could eat this soup even though it's bland what else um let's get a thigh mm. and then let's get a piece of breast the rest of this maybe I'll do some escabeche out of this okay the Belizean chicken soup this is already washed and with vinegar and stuff and let me get off some of this skin. We don't need all of this. So at first I was putting some pink Himalayan sea salt and then it dawned on me that maybe that might be considered something red. So I rinsed it off and just used some white sea salt, some black pepper, and then I'm going to put some oil in the pot, put the chicken pieces to brown, and then add a ton of water to let it cook. I've added some potatoes also that I can eat. I can eat the chicken and the potato and he's just going to do the broth. So he's going to do this until it's time to start drinking the thing. So Joe has been drinking this stuff since 6 o'clock. 8 ounces every 15 minutes. And it's almost 8 o'clock right now. And he says he's starting to feel like he's going to bust. <laughs> you did okay at first though, right? Oh, yeah. How are you tolerating the taste? It's, it's pretty good. It's alright. It's just salty for you? For me it's gross. <laughs> no. So this is what... Remember I set this aside earlier for him to drink in the morning? I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in this bottle. Because all he has left is this. Eight, ounce, eight ounces that he's going to drink at 8 o'clock. And then half of this, which is eight ounces at 8.15 and 8.30, he's done. So it takes you from 6 to 8.30 to drink that almost 3 liters. Eight ounces every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you have three more doses to go, baby. When you start using the bathroom, then you'll feel better. Right now, you feel bloated, right? Because I just take everything coming in and nothing going out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a trooper, babe. Plans changed. It's now 8.52 in the morning, and they just called and asked Joe to chug the rest of that liter and eat this simethicone because uh, somebody canceled on their test. And so now they can move him up. I don't know why they just didn't have you drink that whole thing last night and be done with it. <laughs> so now he has to get there for 10. He's probably not going to have the procedure done until 11 because he can't, he can't do it inside of two hours of you chugging that thing. And you, you finish chugging it at 8.50, 9.50, 10.50. So they'll do it closer to 11. That's good. You know? So are you ready? Joe, Joe says, I'm over it. <laughs> Joe, are you over I'm it? I'm hungry. I need to eat something. <laughs> All you had was that broth two times yesterday, right? You had that protein, you had the protein with water, and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have any dairy. Mm -hmm. And then you had um, broth twice, and then you chugged that thing last night, right? Mm -hmm. You chugged, you drank that thing, mm -hmm. and then now he chugged, oh, you're dark. He chugged the rest of it, so now I'm rushing to get dressed <laughs> so we can get over there for 10 guys. See you guys over there. So we've checked in, and they have a lot of um, questions to ask here. Hello. What's up? Yeah. I'm doing a um, documentary on the yeah, process. Okay. They said when they take him back, I'm going to have yeah. to leave. Okay. But I haven't seen them do that to anybody, so yeah. I could very well stay. 
But I'm gonna go outside to sit with Jory because he's waiting outside for us. Okay. So the question here is just like, when did you have solid food? Did you drink all the thing? Do you have, give me this. They ask for, you know, your weight and height. Why are you taking the test? And his reason is because he got a positive stool test, right? And did you finish all the thing? What color was the last ball moment? Are you diabetic? Look, Joy's so blessed. He's no for all of these things. Huh? huh? Maybe take 10 years. 10 years or what? Just a board. Three board. <laughs> and if he's in pain, does he have any loose teeth or dentures, history of falls, chest pains, short of breath, constipation, diarrhea, incontinence? And you can't say yes because the medicine made you poop. You gotta say no for that, right? And what does he took? He took that semitacone at 850 because they told him to take it. And then my name. Okay. Or okay. Joseph Greenwich. Yeah. Took Joe back at 1024 and they said in one hour to one hour and fifteen minutes they're gonna wheel him out right here. So I came to sit outside with Jory because it was gonna be boring just being inside by myself. But if Jory didn't come and I had to sit in there, I don't think they would have put me out and I would have found something to do on one of the phones. Okay, but right now it's nice outside. So, um, yeah, um, we never like take these type of procedures for granted because the technician or the doctor, or the nurse, I don't know who does a colonoscopy it's a, if it's a technician, but they need to have precision accuracy to do these type of things so they don't perforate your inside and yada yada. So we don't take them for granted. So I already said a blessing over him, pray, anointed him, and he's in there and I know he's in good hands. Jory went to go get the truck because they called to say that the procedure is done, he's awake, and they're gonna bring him out in like 15 minutes. But that was like five minutes ago. So they might be bringing him right now. No, that's not him. Okay, <laughs> He's another lady. Yeah, so um, I I think it took like 45 minutes for them to do it. So factor the time to put him to sleep, time to wake him up. So I'm believing that he's gonna be clean inside. That they didn't find anything. Okay. I always think positively. So it's getting kind of crowded out here. But Julie was sitting there at first. We kind of sat far apart so nobody would come sit between us. <laughs> He's going crowded. Yeah, He's going crowded. Uh, all right, guys. So after all that prepping and the procedure and everything, they finally sent the report. It came through last night, and I'm just now seeing it this morning. I I went through it already, so I want to go through it with you guys really quickly. I'm going to try to not show too much, you know, private information. Right here, it just talks about the risk and the benefits and the alternatives to a colonoscopy. And then I'm going to skip over the part where, you know, they show the medications they gave him and so on and so on. Then they said what they did, how they went in with the scope and they didn't have any trouble getting in with the scope, thank God. And then they found six polyps. At first, I thought Joe was like groggy when he told me that because the initial paperwork said something about three, but I guess they found three in one area, one here, one here, one here for a total of six. They removed them all. These are things that can lead to things later if you don't get those out right away. That's why these tests are so important, right? So then it says other findings, diverticulosis. And it's a mild case of it. Diverticulosis is where the intestines get sluggish like an elephant's trunk. And then things can kind of get blocked in there and hooked up in the little sluggish areas like seeds and nuts and big particles of stool and stuff like that. So he's going to have to watch his intake of seeds and nuts and everything having seeds. Oh my God. Even the top of the burger bread. Why? So then they also found hemorrhoids. I think everybody pretty much has hemorrhoids. And then they found uh, melanosis coli. That's the one that I had to look up. And it's a discoloration in the intestines to show um, overuse of laxatives. So um, we're always warned not to take too much laxative. But sometimes when you can't go, you got to do something, right? So what we're going to do right now is go back to the natural forms. Like I don't want to do Miralax because that's a laxative also. I don't want to do medications. I want to do natural things like prune juice, prunes, uh, maybe even some cod liver oil here and there. I got to look up to see if that's healthy. 
and then also the Metamucil. Joanna used to take Metamucil quite often, but it starts to make me feel bloated, so I stopped putting it in the shakes, and I really feel like we need to figure out a way to put it back in. So I have an appointment for my own self to go see my doctor at the end of this month for her to look into what my stomach issues are. I don't know that she's going to order me a colonoscopy because they don't jump straight to that, but I think there's other tests she can do to see what's up with me. But in the meanwhile, Joe didn't have any symptoms, more than you know constipation here and there, and then he got that blood in the stool on the last test, and that's why they ordered it. And so far, I think we're okay. I asked my friend, who is a nurse, and I said, don't they do pathology on the stuff that they cut out? And he says, yes, they do. But they pretty much can visualize from the naked eye more or less what something looks like. And the pathology is just to confirm. And he feels that from this report that we don't have anything to worry about, that everything's treatable and non-cancerous. All right. So that's what we're going to go by. And I'm going to wait to edit this video just to see if another report will come back on the pathology. And then I'll put it as an addendum to the end, okay? Meanwhile, you guys get your colonoscopy done if that's what your doctor ordered. If you're having you know, weird symptoms, definitely check with your doctor. Because a lot of things are treatable and curable if you catch it in time, okay? So be encouraged. When we do these tests like this and I make these type of videos, I always try to encourage you and not to scare you, okay? So if you want to donate to the show, I'm going to put my cash app down below because these type of videos I can't monetize. I can try to turn on the monetization, but they will demonetize it and say that it's not suitable for all um, sponsors. It is what it is. I don't make any money off of any of these medical things that I put. And remember, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I am just showing you the prep that my husband went through to get this test. And he did the test and now it's done. So late Tuesday night, the night after the colonoscopy, we received another test result. And this is the pathology report for the polyps that were removed. So let's take a look at what the report says. It says the biopsy results taken during your recent colonoscopy were benign. Oh my goodness, what a relief. Wow, he has to go back for another colonoscopy in three years. And then they sent Joe home with a bunch of paperwork. Right here is the fiber facts. It says that most American diets only have 15 grams of fiber per day in it. And we need more like 25 to 38 grams of fiber per day. On this side of the page, it shows you all the good options for fiber. And then this page right here talks about the colon polyps. It says the cause of most colon polyps is not known and most people who get them do not have any problems. Thank God Joe is in that situation where they removed all of them and there was no cancer found. And it says in order to, there's no home treatment for the colon polyps, but you can take steps to prevent them from forming. Even though they don't know what causes them to form, they're still telling you that there's stuff that you can do to stop them from forming. So it says get regular exercise and stay at a healthy body weight. Exercise can lower your chance of getting colon cancer. Get at least 30 minutes of exercise on most days of the week. Walking is a good choice, but you may also want to do other activities such as running, swimming, cycling, or playing tennis, or some type of team sports. Limit your alcoholic drinks to two a day for men and one a day for women. And then uh, do not smoke, do not vape, and eat lots of fruits and vegetables and limit animal fat in your diet. I think this plan right here is good for everything, not just to prevent colon cancer. I think for diabetes, for high blood pressure, for high cholesterol, this is the way that we want to go, right? So we're really grateful that Joe had the opportunity to take this test because a lot of people don't even have access to a test like this, that they cut out whatever was trying to form, you know, problems in there, and that he is doing well right now, and we are definitely celebrating his good health and we're going to do everything they say to do on this paper so that we can keep great health okay thanks for watching the video guys if you like what i produce here go ahead and like it share it comment and don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video bye thank you for making it all the way through to the end please check out my primary channel which can be found right here on youtube it's called the bear pantry show also check out my website bearpantryshow.com so that you can pick up a copy of one of my three books also remember we are not buying this book that's being sold on amazon why because my distributor is ripping me off thanks guys